back here on the program, the platform, and uh, we're having a conversation with uh, Reverend T.G. Morrison today on how we are going to uh, get through uh, 2015. And uh, Pastor Morrison, uh, we have a very short um, uh, time here now because we have uh, a lot of time has elapsed. Um, we are an indisciplined people, I believe, in the Bahamas indisciplined uh, uh, in many ways and it is seen in the social decay that we have the social degradation and it is also seen in how we manage our affairs and uh, I, I believe that uh, there are good many people who would need to be um, lectured for want of a better word or spoken to um, in this new year about how to become more disciplined because the ill-disciplined society is seen in crime, uh, it is seen in dysfunctional homes and how we treat one another. Well, let's put it this way. Since I'm not a social scientist, I'm not an economist, well, let me answer you from a spiritual perspective. No, no, you, you, are, apostle, you are one of those things. <laughs> the uh, Apostle Paul, when he spoke to the saints of Galatia, he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And uh -huh. he, he, he caps it by saying, at the end of the day, the, spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, manifests itself in self-control. The challenge that we have is that if a people do not submit themselves to the highest of all powers respect God, the source and ground of our being, as Paul Tillich says, we're going to have a fundamental problem. A part of what the, the church, in my humble opinion, is supposed to be doing, is supposed to be helping people to get the tools so that they can live that disciplined lifestyle. Because what we uh, promulgate as Christians is that Christianity is the best way to live. If you live the Christian lifestyle, you would actually experience abundant living. The problem that I found is that we have so spiritualized the texts, scripture, that the human uh, principles that could be taken from the texts are lost because everybody is so hell-bent on trying to get to heaven. I believe that the church has to slow down the pace and begin some sustained deliberate, intentional teaching. A part of the ministry and witness of the church, Brother Jones, is not only charismatic, which is proclamation, it is didactic, it is teaching. And I talk about sound doctrine, because we got some bad teaching in this country, because we got some bad teachers in this country. So there are instances in which the Christian church can help in this regard, because the principle of stewardship and how we manage what is entrusted to us, there are biblical principles. The way we manage our homes, there are biblical principles. The way we engage in business enterprise in the Bible, every aspect of human life, there is scripture that speaks to it. The problem is we are not devoting ourselves to teaching. One of the things that I find very curious, Brother Jones, you know, a lot of people, sometimes I listen to talk shows, like, oh, the church ain't doing this, church doing this, and I can think of at least 15 symposiums, conferences, or teaching enterprises that we had at Zion last year through our Christian education ministry, but people don't come, and they're for free. They're for free. The problem is, Brother Jones, People want, they say they want to be better, but they don't want to avail themselves to the fora that would make them better. But could it be that you, you, you're having, you should go into the community and, and have these things? I'll go into the highways and the byways. So, so I, I, I believe uh, in, in one sense there is a, a, a point and a place for that, a point for evangelism. When I talked about these symposiums, I'm talking about where we are creating mm. the environment for persons to learn parenting skills, to learn some principles of money management, of budgeting. There are certain things that are not feasible to be doing on the road. And when I say on the road, in certain mm. settings. So, yeah, in, 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 in a confined way, 
we, we are doing what we are doing. Yeah, but the church is not just the leadership. The church is I'm made up of, of other, the, the parishioners well, but who, Jones. who ought to be taking the message that you are, are teaching into the community. Wonderful. You said you came to watch night service. And what did you do? Having heard, you shared. Yes. You shared it with some persons on New Year's Day. Yes. If every Christian, every person who hears the word of God, believes the word of God to be true, and passionately expresses and shares that word, then change comes. Because bit by bit, bit by bit, we begin to influence. I have said it on multiple shows with you. There is this incongruence between what we do in the church house and what we practice. That is the fundamental problem we have in our country. Most of us do not carry our Christianity outside of the doors of these worship houses. That's politicians, because when the politicians say what the church doing, they are church people as well. The last census suggests that 95% of the people in the Bahamas say they belong to the Christian church. So when the politicians get up and say, what is the church doing? They're talking about themselves because church is people. When I say what the church is doing, we're talking about ourselves. When you, as a member of another estate, say what is it the church doing? Every journalist, every news person who sits in a congregation, they hear the gospel and they have to take the gospel with them in the doings of their specific function, their specific vocation. Enough of us not doing that, Brother Jones. The Beatles, many years ago in the 60s, they sang about what the world need now is love. And um, at the beginning of 2015, there are many people who are predicting the number of homicides that we probably would have in the Bahamas in 2015. Uh, because we don't see love, neighborly love, um, in our society. The ability to settle scores, scores uh, to, to settle conflicts. Uh, this is a place where there is a culture of violence. We started there and let's end there. Well, let's I'm believing the, God. The ethic, the ethic of love that has to be taught. Okay. Well, that means that there are persons who are going to have to submit themselves to what God's law demands. You know, one of the things I find very fascinating in the Bahamas is that people are spiritual only when they are in crisis mode. That most people do not wish to hear the message of Jesus Christ as it relates to how they conduct every aspect of their lives. But when their backs are hard pressed against the wall, they won't call the pastor. They won't call some religious person. Listen, if we are going to be a people seriously committed to interrupting the cycles of anti-social behavior and bad, outright bad behavior, we are going to have to be a people given to the law of love. And for me, that law finds its genesis in Almighty God. Therefore, the call, pastoral call, is for us to come into real relationship with God and Jesus Christ, whose love gives meaning to our love. For us to learn of Jesus Christ, to learn the heart of Jesus, his willingness to self-expose, the willingness to empty of everything that was near and dear to him, his willingness to suffer, his willingness to participate. My God, Brother Jones, the mystery of the incarnation is that God puts on skin. He, come, he becomes flesh to identify with us. And so this notion of incarnational Theology has to become real, where the church acts as the extension of the incarnation, where the church gives expression, living, tangible witness of her Lord. So the, the message of Christmas then uh, has to be carried throughout the year. Emmanuel, God is with us. Every moment, every second, every waking experience of our lives, he is not a God of a particular place. He is a God always with us. Because many people look at uh, Christmas as being an event rather than looking at the message of Christmas. It's a lifestyle. It's, it's living with that understanding that God is with me. And with that understanding, God is with me. I understand that this God will keep his promise to make all things beautiful in God's own time. 
Reverend Dr. T.G. Morrison, thank you so very much. You keep prophesying, so I, I, one day I'm going to keep and make this, this, this vision of yours. Well, they too. tell me that you are, you are still in university. You are working on a thesis now. Pray my strength in the Lord, Brother Jones. I, I'm in school in Jamaica. The Lord has opened the door, and the people of Zion have been very supportive, and I, I pray that we could get this study done. Thank you so very much. Appreciate it. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. God bless you, Bahamas. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to our program today. Uh, and I'm sure you found it enjoyable and you would have uh, you learned a whole lot of things today. Thank you. Good evening, everyone.